Anna. How are you? Okay, so we're just going to take a couple more minutes, guys, let people get a chance to sign in. And I'm going to work on making myself the big video. Okay, so we're going to get started in just a few minutes and all we're going to need today is a mat and a resistance band. If you don't have a resistance band, your option is a two to five pound plate, but if you don't have that either, you'll be just fine with your body weight. So anytime we use the resistance band, you can set up just the same way with either your body weight or your mat, you'll be fine. Okay. Okay, we've got two more minutes before we get started. So again, for those of you who were not here when I said earlier, we're going to need a resistance band today, and then either a two or five pound plate if you don't have a resistance band. So a resistance band for a two or five pound plate. If you don't have a plate or a resistance band, that's totally fine. One more minute before we get started. So just a reminder, if you guys want me to be able to um, see you and give you feedback as we're working, you want to go ahead and turn your camera on. If you're not comfortable with that, it's totally fine. I just won't be able to give you any feedback as we're working, okay? All right, 10 o'clock, ready to go? Let's go ahead and head back toward our mats. We're going to lie on our back. So heels come in toward glutes, go ahead and lie down on your mat, press your low back toward the mat, tucking the hips a little bit, drawing the belly button in toward the spine and lock it there. Roll the shoulders down from your ears, hands by hips, palms up, and we're going to start with a double leg lift. So we're going to lift and lower. So knees stop directly above the hips, shins parallel to the ceiling, and keep that low back pressed toward the mat as we move. As the feet come down, it's just a gentle tap of the toes, no noise being made. Now, as we move, can you isolate the movement to your hips, keeping the knee joint still, holding 90 degree angle as long as you can through the movement. We're going to do two more. Bring the fingertips to temples. 
And now let's turn it into a C crunch. So both the upper and lower body lift and come down. Up and down. Keep the chin tucked. Bottom rib slides toward your hip bone. We stop above the hips. And we pull those shoulder blades up and off the floor while keeping the elbows wide. Let's do three more. Last one. And now we're gonna twist to the front. So lift the front leg, bring back elbow up and over and switch to the back. Front and back. So notice that my hips are staying flat on the floor. They're not rocking. My elbows are staying wide and I'm leaning across the body with my shoulder. Now, we're warming up through the waistline here. So let's bring the upper back into it a little bit by squeezing the shoulder blades together. And that'll help keep those elbows wide as we move. One more to the front, one more to the back. Lie down, hands by hips, heels in toward hoods. We're going up into hip bridge. So drive the hips up toward the ceiling, parallel. Squeeze the butt, squeeze the hamstrings, and push your heels down into the mat. Lift the hips as high as you can. Now lower halfway down and lift up. Down and up. Check in with your knees. Are they in line with your hips? Every stage of the movement, we're holding the knees in line with hips or pushing down through the heels. Now, as you lift at the top of your movement, you're gonna be on the tippy top of the back of your shoulders. So I'll lift my arms so you can see. See how everything is lifting, warming up through that entire posterior chain here. Two more. One. Roll down slowly, back to that cross crawl. This time, we can extend the leg front and back. So by extending the leg, you're adding a little bit more load to the core, warming up a little bit deeper into the muscles. Five more each side. Bring the shoulder up and over. Twist through the center of your chest. Point the toe, lengthen the leg, or you can stay with the bent knee. One more each side. Deep crunch, both toes down, up and down. Keep the low back pressed toward the floor as you move. Elbows wide and really tighten through the belly here, squeezing everything in toward the center. Four more. Chin tucked, that gaze between the knees. Last one. Hands down, double leg lift. All right, so as the hip flexors fatigue, use your lower abdominals to keep that back down. Three more. Two. Last one. Good job, that's your warm up. Grab your hands and knees, let's flip up and over. And we're gonna set up our hover. So flip onto your belly. Bring your elbows underneath your shoulders, fists into the floor. Feet just wide and hips, come up to the knees, bring your hips shoulder height. And then if you're feeling good, you can come up to the toes. If you're on the knees, just hold there. If you're on the toes, we're gonna rock forward and back. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see, shifting the weight forward toward the thumbs and then back toward the heels. As you move, keep your hips level. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your hamstrings, and then squeeze the quads to put your knees up toward the ceiling. 
If you're on your knees holding, you're just here. All right, so focusing on your form. We want to pull the belly button in so that the back is nice and flat. Don't push up through the hips or let them push down. Nice flat back as we move. Press the forearms into the floor. That's going to stabilize your shoulders. We've got 10 more seconds. Two. And one. Flip over to your back, please. So on the back, pressing the back toward the mat. Bring the knees above hips and then extend your legs. Just point it to the ceiling. Reach fingertips up toward the toes. We're going to pike. Two arms and legs out to 45. And then circle the arms around, knees bent. Up, out, and around. So this is our integrated power movement. Working all of the core muscles at the same time, training them to coordinate and communicate to support the body's movement and protect the spine. So as you come up, Reach long through the legs, reach long through the arms. Up, out, and around. One more rep. Good job. Bring the knees back over hips, readjust the low back toward the floor, palms by hips, extend the legs if you can, and draw circles on the ceiling. So pointing the toes, drawing large circles on the ceiling, legs go out, down, in, and up. Your modification, if this is too much, is to go to bent knees. So you're gonna use the bent knee option if you feel your low back pulling up off the floor. If you feel too much stress, right here through the front of your hips. Or you can just feel fatigued. You feel like you're having bad form. This is your lower intensity option. Right, if you're here, we've got 10 more seconds. Lengthen through the legs. And done. Grab your head and knees, roll up and over, and back into hover. Look to the belly. Choose knees or toes. If you're on the toes, we're going to rock forward and back. All right, check in with your spine. We want straight alignment. So eye gaze is in front of the fingertips. Hips are slightly tucked, but it's squeezed. Shoulder blades pulling in toward the spine and down the back. 15 more seconds. Can you reach your chest forward of your thumbs and push your heels back? Let me see how you're doing. Beautiful control, Judy. Yes, Jen, nice straight back. Good. Good. Five seconds. Three, two, one, flip on the back. Legs up, fingertips up, pike up, out, and around. So knees over hips. Arms and legs extend long. And as we shoot out to 45 degrees, shoulders and head touch the floor. Focus on control. Focus on lifting long through the limbs. 15 more seconds. Remember, your modification is going to be to shorten how much you drop. Last one. Hold the legs long, hands by hips, draw circles with the legs. Up, out, down, in. So point your toes 
like the sharpened end of a pencil. Knees are soft, but legs are straight. And we're using our pencil to draw big circles on the ceiling about the size of a bicycle tire. You're gonna feel the lower abdominals working, the hip flexors and quads. 10 more seconds. Remember, modification when you fatigue is to bend the knees. You feel your low back lifting, when your hip flexors fatiguing, go ahead and take that option, okay? And done, nice job, grab behind the knees. Let's roll up and come to a standing position. We're gonna go into some rotational power moves the next three moves. So this is where we're going to use that band or that two to five pound plate. If you have the band, step your right foot in the center, step the feet wide, and then drop your inside handle. Come on into a lunge toward the right side, push the knee out, square the hips forward, roll shoulders up, back and down. We're gonna bring both so arms out to the corner, up and over, resist back. So if you're using a plate or just your body weight, you're set up just like we are. You just don't have the band. So even without resistance, this move is going to work the rotational muscles. If you're focusing on control and technique. So notice, my chest is turning only 45 degrees off center. The arms come up and over the head and then back to chest height. And the whole time the shoulder blades are pulling together, keeping the chest lifted. One more breath. Then we're gonna go to parallel wood chop. So hold here and side to side. So just side to side, arms just tight. If you're fatigued, you can drop the arms a little bit. Focus on keeping the shoulder blades pulled in, chest lifted, hips square forward. Thirty more seconds. Corner to corner. Now can you add a little bit of fire? Pretend you have a hammer, a sledgehammer, and you're hitting between two brick walls. Yeah, Judy, I see that strength. Good job. 10 seconds. Five. Come on. Push the knees wide. Done. Good job. Switch sides. So foot. Left foot, center of the band, quick roll of the shoulders, shake of the legs, feet wide, lunge to the left, extend the arms out, square the hips forward, rainbow up and over. So the band, it's pulling us back toward our foot. Resist that, fight it. Up and over, now slow. Up and over, now slow. 10 more seconds. Small twist to the chest. Don't get crazy with it, small. 45 degrees, wood chop side to side. Remember, if you're fatigued, bring it down. What's important here, hips stay forward. Knees stay bent, butt is low, and just shifting side to side. We're holding the contraction through the sling muscles and through the obliques by keeping that twist small. So just 45 degrees. Chest lifted, arms long, 
If you find them bending, lose your band. 15 seconds. All right, come on, break that wall. Five seconds. How much power can you put between the twist? Come on. Last one. Done, good job. Take your band or plate, you have the band, fold it in half, feet wide and hips, just slightly. Band comes to collarbones or plate comes to collarbones. We're gonna squat and push the plate overhead. Ready, go. Weight in heels, toes are light. Butt sits back and down, the hip height. Start to knee height. Keep the chest lifted. Keep the knees behind your toes and use the power from the legs to drive the band up. Knees are in line with hips, pushing out slightly. Chest up as we move. So this whole set of moves that we've just done, five moves, all about training the core to protect the spine in twisting movement or when we need to power overhead. So shooting basketball, jumping up for a block in volleyball, clean and press, lifting something up onto a high shelf, five seconds, squeeze the butt, drive the heels down, last one, good job. All right, put the band down, lie down on the mat. We're gonna go into the section where we work our glutes and our hips. So bring the heels in toward the glutes, knees in line with hips, and push up in the hip bridge. Hold here. Thanks, Ellie, grab my paper instead of this. My timer, all right, hold up. Heels drive down. As you push down with the heels, you're gonna feel the calves engage, hamstrings, and glutes. Now it's up to us to bring the back muscles in by driving the hips up, squeezing the butt tighter, and that's going to engage those back muscles. Hold for another five seconds. And we're gonna pulse three times, and then we're halfway down. Go, three, two, one halfway. So that pulse, it's a quick contraction of the glute muscles. And since it's a quick contraction, rather than a sustained one, we get a little bit of an extra power push and we can drive the hips about one inch higher than where we were holding. So really reach those hip bones for the ceiling Try to reach your chest to your chin. We've got 10 more seconds. Good job, lower down, hug the knees in real quick. We're gonna go back into bridge. So you can hug them in both at the same time or alternate one at a time. Choice is yours. You just wanna get a little bit of a stretch so that we don't crimp. And our next move, so come on up and hit bridge. Okay, we're gonna go into some single leg work. Our concentration is going to be keeping these hips level to the ceiling up this whole time. So, shift your weight to your back foot, front knee comes over hip, shin parallel to the ceiling, extend and lift. Extend and lift. So we're pointing the toe, we're driving the leg long, and then we're Scooping it back up. So if this is too challenging, you can go ahead and set your heel down, reset the hips, bring them up high, keep them lifted, and then when you're ready, come back to the single leg work. Last rep. Foot down, hold, shift weight to the front leg, push the hips up, bring the back leg up. Extend and in. All right, really push through that standing heel. 
Brace your abdominals to keep your hips still. And we're gonna challenge the glute and quad of the moving leg by pushing it really long and then scooping it up as we bring it back over the hip. 20 more seconds. Come on. Oh, can you feel that hamstring on the standing leg? We're almost there. Drive the heel down, keep the hips up. Two. And the last one. Good job. Lower the hips down, grab behind the knees. We're going to grab our band and stand up. All right. Step in the band. Feet hip distance apart. Handles up on the hips. Band is either crossed or you can keep it straight if you want less resistance. Chest up. We're going to squat and lift. Switch legs. So in that lift, we're keeping the foot facing forward. So toe facing forward, heel facing back. Try not to tilt it. Drive out through the center of the edge of your foot. And that, keep going, is going to engage these outer hip muscles. Stabilizing through the sides of the hips. As you squat, keep the chest lifted. Push the hips back and down. Drive through the heels to lift. So we're doing 360 degree hip training here. Strong hips are important to help us prevent knee pain. The hips that help stabilize the lower body. Strong hips shape time off of your running. All right, two more. Last one. Good. Done. We are done with the band. I'm going to put it to the side. Going into oblique work now. Lie on your side. We're going to set up side hover. Bottom knees bent in line with hip. Elbow under shoulder. And we're going to go ahead and push up. Pulse four times. Four, three, two, one. Now rolling hover. Roll onto the knees. And back up. Do it again. Four pulses. Four, three, two, one. Roll. All right. So you can go here with one knee down. Put both knees down. All right. I can see that Judy's already taking the challenge of extending both legs. Four, three, two, one. And roll. So we're pressing the form into the floor, holding the elbow directly under the shoulder. And then when we roll, we're rolling the hips and shoulders at the same time. So focus on moving the body as if it were a board. No twisting, just rolling. 10 more seconds. Last one. And good. Put your hip down, put your shoulder down, arm in front of the body. All right. We're going to go ahead and crunch up and down. Up and down. So the choice is yours where you want to go. This is about medium level here. If you want, you can keep the leg bent. Or you can bring both legs up. But what you want to do is keep your hips and shoulders square forward. 
so that you're focusing on isolating through this top oblique. Five more seconds. And done. Go back into your side hover, elbow under shoulder, seam side. Knee bent, foot hip height. We're going to crunch here. In, in, out. So keep hips and shoulders stacked, no rolling forward or back. We're working the oblique in conjunction with the hip muscles. Training muscles that should work together in everyday movement. So try to hold that foot hip height. 15 more seconds. Keep that bottom hip elevated if you can, but if you need modification, you can drop it. Done, switch sides. Side hover on that opposite side. Elbow under shoulder, knee in line with hip, extend the top leg, and come on up, four pulses. Four, three, two, one, rotate. Up. So the nice thing about doing timed intervals is you can move at your own pace. So if you want to move faster than I am, totally fine. Just make sure you're keeping your form. Choose the level you want. Great. Jen, beautiful control. Good. Good. It's a small pulse. We've got five more seconds. Three, two, one. Come on down, hips to the floor. Front arm out like a kickstand, square hips and shoulders, fingertips to temples. Reach up and down. So remember, choice is yours. Extend the leg, keep it bent. Or you can even keep it on the floor if you want. The only thing that really matters is you're keeping your hips and shoulders square, isolating through that top oblique. As you come up, you're, we're going to push up, push down through that forearm, and allow that arm to support the body as it comes up. Two more reps. Good, come on down, knee in line with hip, elbow under shoulder, sorry Baba. All right, lift up, extend arm overhead, foot in line with hip, crunch in, in out. As we fatigue, it's tempting to push away from the elbow, don't. Keep your shoulder over the elbow, that's gonna protect your shoulder joint. Brace through the bottom oblique, to keep the bottom hip lifted, or you can set it down if you're fatigued. We're keeping this hip muscle engaged by keeping the foot hip height. 10 more seconds. Hips and shoulders square, come on. Two, and one, hip down. Good job. Flip over to the belly. We're going to work the posterior chain now, so all of the muscles down the back. Flip onto the belly. Squeeze your legs as close together as you can. Calves, thighs, feet, everything squishing together. Bring the arms out. And we're going to, I'm sorry, fingertips to temples. That's what I want. We're going to lift up, reach back, temples in down. So as we lift, we slide the shoulder blades in. That's going to help us. Lift the chest from the floor. Chin is tucked, eye gaze to the floor in front of us, and then squeeze the butt tight. That's going to engage the lumbar muscles that protect the low back. Now, as we reach back, we're sliding the shoulder blades in and down, reaching for the hips. 
Can you get a little bit more height in these last two? Last one. Good. Stack the hands. Legs nice and long. Flutter kick. Forehead on hands. Alter and sideways. So you can see. Sorry, bugs. Flutter kick is coming from the hips. Okay? Not the knees. From the hips. So legs stay nice and long. We squeeze the glute and hamstring. So lift the quad off the floor. 20 more seconds here. Almost there. Keep the legs nice and long. We're going to add on. So remember that back extension we did at the beginning. We're going to keep the flutter kick at the back extension. Fingertips to temples and go up, reach back, in and down. So every muscle down the back of the body working now. Try to hover on your hip bones as you lift both the legs and the chest. If both of them at the same time are too much, just choose one. Whichever one you want is fine. 30 seconds. Point the toes, lengthen the legs, squeeze the butt. Lift the chest as high as you can. Come on, reach back. Reach back for your heels. Oh, we're almost there. Almost there, 15 seconds. This is our last move. Do not leave any energy in the tank. Come on, give it all here. Give it all here. Five seconds. Lift a little bit higher. Last one. Done. Push back to child's pose. All right. Child's pose. Let's take a second to breathe. All right, big inhale. Then as you exhale, push the hips back toward your heels and release through your low back and hips. Big inhale. As you exhale, slide your fingertips one inch further away from the body and feel that nice stretch through the shoulders. Big inhale. And as you exhale, let the chest fall toward the mat. We're done. Great job today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, we're opening July 6th at the gym. Classes resume July 13th. All right, so I hope to see you all soon. Any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, okay? All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye.